Hi, do you know that sleeping more can significantly impact your body composition? We spend more than a third of our lives sleeping and we are still learning the significance of it. However, one thing is clear is the consequences of not getting enough sleep. My name is Bonnie London, and after nearly 30 years of working to inspire individuals, first as a personal trainer and then as a registered dietitian, it is my goal to give you the latest tricks to achieve your personal weight or health goals. Now, in today's video, I am going to review why sleeping could be one of the most important aspects in achieving your personal weight or health goals maybe even trumping diet and exercise. Even one night of sleep, for example, signals a stress response to your body, which will increase cortisol and lower testosterone. This stress response encourages fat storage while inhibiting muscle growth. The cortisol can actually break down your muscle tissue in an effort to create more glucose. This is terrible. And if this isn't enough of a concern, this increase in stress also disrupts the hormones that control your hunger, like ghrelin and leptin, making it that you're gonna be more likely to be hungry the next day, but particularly for those high glycemic carbs to give you the quick energy and your brain also is going to have a difficulty eliminating it toxins, which means that you might have brain fog and have less willpower, making it even harder to avoid temptations or engage in those positive lifestyle habits like managing stress and exercising. Okay, well, while some of these things we can control, there are some basic sleep hygiene strategies that really can help set you up for a more successful night's sleep. Number one, stay on schedule. Try to work with your natural circadian rhythm, which of course is sleeping at night and being awake during the day. And it's actually beyond that recommended to not go beyond an hour of a jog between the normal time you go to bed and wake up because actually a lot of people in our culture suffer from something called uh, social jet lag. That's because if you traditionally go to bed at 10 a.m., 10 p.m., for example, excuse me, uh, during the week and then on Friday night or Saturday, you stay up till one with your friends, Guess what happens? Your body thinks it went to California for the weekend, and then this makes it all more difficult to try to wake up and function for work on Monday. Hmm. And now plan for sleep opportunity. So it's not just, you know, the goal of getting that basically seven to nine hours to sleep, which, which is what recommended, but you want to make sure you have enough time actually in bed, resting and all of that so that you're more likely to get those hours of quality sleep. Number three, this is huge, keeping the temperature cool. And actually the, the research I was looking up said about 68 degrees, which does sound a little nippy to me, but we need to consider that we have not evolved to be in this climate control situation and your body signal from the temperature tells you when the sun is down that it is time to sleep. Number four, get exposure to natural sunlight, especially in the morning because this helps reset again your circadian rhythm and it, it also puts your body into motion to produce melatonin which now that being said, later in the day, we want different rays of light coming in. And right now we have all these artificial lights, 
which have been making it very uh, difficult. So what I like to say is A, when the sun goes down, think candlelight. So turn off your lights. We also have glasses that people have been wearing that are the blue blockers and certainly on your devices, you can also block the blue waves as well. There's something called Flux for your computer. And then I think it even comes with the phone, like I know I have one on my iPhone, uh, so that there's different waves going off. Number five, don't do anything in the bedroom other than sleeping and sex, because this is going to associate your brain with being distracted and there has been shown some consequences and also try to keep your bedroom peaceful and what i mean by that is no clutter and work uh, stuff around in your bedroom and wi-fi number six i believe <laughs> has also been shown to interfere with the regenerative process that your body undergoes when you sleep so please don't keep your phone plugged next to your head, which I will admit to doing sometimes. I mean, it's hard, but we know that there are consequences. This is such a new technology. Uh, next on the list is your diet and when you eat, not just what you eat, but when you eat. And basically, the, the suggestion is that you need at least three hours before going to sleep. And this is particularly true with, with protein. So you don't want to eat a, a big meal that has lots of protein in it because the protein actually, due to its high thermic effect, uh, can interrupt with your sleep process. And also we need to consider that your bacteria, which has a lot of responsibilities, like digesting your food and uh, coordinating sleep, kind of uh, get confused, right? So they want to know that you're going to sleep and not time to digest and absorb. Also alcohol, although it may seem like it may help you go to sleep, it actually can totally interrupt the quality of sleep, preventing you from getting into those deeper levels of sleep. And coffee, which is now considered a superfood, uh, is awesome, but I would say, first of all, everyone, according to the genetics, has a different ability to digest or process caffeine and how long it stays in your body. But a, a good suggestion is certainly no more than four cups for most people and try to finish it before noon. Like personally, I just do mine at somewhere between actually like 5.30 and 6.30 and then uh, that's it. Exercise is huge, particularly in the morning. In fact, there's studies showing that as little as five minutes of just getting activity and oxygen in your body, thinking squats or anything, so everyone has time to do something, can really help with producing this melatonin and your sleep quality the, the next night. However, one one suggestion for sure is do not do exercise too close to sleep, especially a high intensity workout, because that of course will heat you up and it can definitely interrupt uh, your sleep. And then finally, just, we need to turn off the day and relax. This is where I do think TV can make it challenging depending on what you're watching, unless it's something entertaining like a sitcom like I like to do. Uh, and I also suggest trying to get yourself in a relaxed place. Every, everyone is different, what, what might work, but there's a lot of uh, for free, like sleep meditation apps, um, hypnotherapy, something called emotional freedom technique, but even taking a, a bath, um, reading a book, Something like that. I think about when my children were little from the time they were born, I never just, you know, tossed them in the crib. The lights were dim. I would read to them. Sometimes sing like animal songs. I don't know, whatever, you get the idea. By the end of 40 minutes, trust me, they were like, please go away and I need to, uh, go to bed <laughs> but just like that we can't expect ourselves either to to go straight into bed okay 
So finally, sleep has in the past been really underappreciated for its value, but it really could be what is keeping you or slowing you down from achieving your body composition and your weight goals and also, of course, your health goals. So if you have found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and be notified of each new video. There is a link in the description below if you are interested in discussing your personal situation to book a free no-cost call. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.